Good day, everyone. Um, Brienne here from Pigment. I hope everyone's having a great day. Uh, I'm going to be coloring a piece um, from Alina Lazariva. She is our special featured artist for December. So we had a 10 page in total grayscale book and we also have a line art book. Now I did a grayscale uh, feature. I'm going to color a line art one now. And I'm going to be doing this with one of our, with some of our new palettes. I'm going to be switching up my colors as I need them, but I'm going to start out with the Spearmint palette. And I'm just going to play around, make, do some colors and techniques and some tips and tricks for shading leaves and berries and making the wood for the birdhouse. And I just really adore this picture. And let's have a lot of fun coloring it. So I'm on freehand mode. And I'm on airbrush. Now I'm going to do my background. So I'm just going to brush with color. I don't really, no particular way about it. Just going to brush back and forth and get a good mix of color, creating a somewhat cooler color background. When I say cool colors, that's like blues, purples, um, anything that kind of reminds you of winter being cold, right? Warm would be like orange, yellow, uh, stuff like that, red. So I'm gonna just keep on, I might put a little bit pink in there, warm it up just a bit. It's mostly cool colors. Kind of just blending them together. Throw a little bit of dark in there. I always like doing dark around my edges. I, I find that it creates almost like a layering. So it looks like it's in the forefront, but there's a background kind of happening around it, kind of frames it a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect because I can go back and I can adjust it after. I just want to get some colors down. I'm going to use the bloom and I'm going to lighten up this pastel -y type blue here almost like a turquoise. I'm just going to do a little bit of lighter color gradiently around the birdhouse. Don't want it too much. Just to give it that glow. And then I'm just going to darken up the corners even a little bit more. I'm just trying to figure out how I want this to go here. I actually don't mind that pink in there as long as it's not taking over the picture. So it just kind of creates a depth than just having a flat color background. It makes it look a little bit more visually interesting and I just like kind of having something going on with my background anyway. I'm gonna go to another palette. This is the Golden Midnight one. This is another one that's new. Just thinking about maybe having a little bit of yellow, almost like having sunshine. I'm kind of getting rid of that um, that uh, outward white I did, but that's okay. I work it and I play with it until I get something that I like. I'm just thinking it would look nice to have a little bit of light around. Maybe a little bit more blue, a little bit of dark blue really dark blue. So I'm using both these palettes to kind of make this background. I'm not worried about uh, anything that I'm in the center because I'm going to color over all that stuff. Then 
Then I'm going to go to my blur tool and I'm just gonna see if I can blur these colors together a little bit. And then I'm going to go to Bloom really quickly and maybe just elaborate on that airbrush. I kind of like it when the light isn't even. I like it when the light kind of throws you off balance, like it's uh, coming from an angle almost. back to blur. I just find when you blur the colors together it almost creates like a ripple and I think it looks really cool. Okay so for now I think that's good. I got some colors in place. We can always go back and uh, tweak it a little bit later. So now I'm going to go down to some browns. I'm going to select my wood tool. I'm gonna to put this back on automatic just so it's easier to stay within the lines. And I'm just gonna bring my opacity up here. And I'm just gonna color this uh, birdhouse with the wood. It's uh, almost like a square brush. Like when you make a stroke, it's very square, it's not rounded. So it's a good swiping, uh, swipe for swiping back and forth, excuse me. And when you use the wood brush, I always shade and highlight after. I find it gives a more realis realistic looking uh, effect to the wood, which is what I'm going for, I kind of want little bit of a realistic effect anyway and then you bring your opacity down and you can leave your brush size there that's fine and then just kind of rub a lighter brown in there in areas just kind of bring up your opacity maybe and just kind of get a distressed looking wood feel to your little cute bird house I love coloring birds bright feathers, a lot of fun. And then you can do the same with the dark and just kind of add some shading, like maybe around the heart, under here. I'm actually gonna put it on freehand mode for a second, bring my opacity down. And then just kind of rub it in the edges where you think um, there would be some shading from the overhang. Go back and kind of blend a little bit of it out, but leaving some in. And by doing this, you just kind of get a realistic wood effect because wood is a variation of colors, right? It's not just one color of brown, it's many colors of brown. So that's what we're doing here. We're just making variations to give this kind of a realistic effect. And if you want to do some shading that's a little bit more precise, you can take your airbrush tool out and just kind of brush it around the base of that heart. Even down here, and brush it there. A little bit more in the corners of the little tassels hanging down from the house. 
and it just helps to give visual interest is what it is that's all coloring is is just having visual interest so once you think of it that way then it's a lot kind of puts things kind of into perspective on shading and highlighting and just adding details to your picture because that's what really makes coloring coloring it's all those little details it's all the little things that you don't think matter but then in the end really do make your picture stand out and really add that pop so this is going to be darker because it's the center of the little opening for the birdies so that's why i'm just kind of not quite black but it's like a dark brown and i mixed a couple browns in there so there I think that looks pretty good. I'm not worried about, like, never worry about, if you ever watch any of my videos, I always color outside the lines. I haven't colored those pieces yet. Not worried about it. I was thinking about possibly doing, um, maybe I was going to do a festive colored roof, but maybe not. Maybe I'll stick with the wood, actually. I'll stick with the wood motif here. I'll just use a different color. A little contrasting brown. And so I'm just filling in all these little decorations. Bring my brush size down, my opacity down. Just kind of even more down, like the brush size up. And I'm just going to add a little bit of detail randomly on those as well. I'm going to color where the little birdie's standing. It helps to use different colors of wood because then it kind of differentiates your picture and gives some, some different spots to kind of notice. Just adding some of the last minute shading here, following some of the grains of the wood, blending it out a bit. Okay. So that was fairly simple. I used the wood tool for all of it and it gave a really awesome effect just by changing up the tones of brown and the different colors of brown, dark, light, uh, different shades, and it just creates a nice effect. You're always going to get the best effect when you layer colors. So I'll do I'll show you another example. So if I just go to my pillow fill, I will go to I need something with you know what? I'll use spearmint because I need something with a couple of greens and I got a dark green here and a light green. So I'm just going to not the purple. I'm going to grab that darker green. And I'm just going to fill the leaves. Don't worry about the berry. I'll fix the berry later. And yeah, okay. I'll leave it like that. So you see when you do, I'm using pillow. So there's a little bit of shading. So it does give a little bit of visual interest, but it's not the same as if I were to grab this brighter green you can go to, let's try paintbrush for a change to add a little bit of texture. So I'm going to want to bring your opacity down and your brush size up and just kind of brush it across the inner parts of the leaf. Maybe bring the opacity up just a tad.
So I just lightened up the green again and used almost like the pastel -y end of the spectrum here. And I'm just kind of adding some, some highlights. That's all it is, is some highlights. Then I'm going to go to my pencil tool because I do really like the pencil tool for texture. And I'm just going to sweep it in different areas. I'm going to have to put it back on automatic there. I'm just going to sweep it. the nicest when you mix when you mix these colors and have the variation with the highlight it's the it, ma it makes the best effect I find but I don't really need to draw you can you can emphasize the lines like I just did but in this case I'm just going to keep it simple and I'm not going to because the lines are already pretty dominant here and really I just want a little bit of texture And the bigger your brush size is with the pencil, the more of that granulated look you're gonna get. And I really love that for coloring foliage and fruits and vegetables and even any sweet treats. I know we have a lot of sweet books. Um, really, really great for adding texture to things. So you can always, like I just filled in my color. And then if you go and sweep it over top, it just gives a nice look. I'm going to pick out, I do want a different green. I want like a lime green. To kind of mix it more towards the base and a little bit up through the middle there. A little bit towards... And you, when you're doing leaves, you can even do, you can even put brown in leaves. So if you wanted to grab, let's use the summer essence brown, you wanted to add a little bit of brown. It just kind of gives it a little bit more of a, almost like it's changing colors. I wouldn't use lots because this is a mistletoe leaf. So I definitely wouldn't use lots for this particular one. You can add a little bit just to just to spice it up. Spice it up a notch. Okay, so the leaves. Now let's do the berries. Let's do the berries purple. I have a purple or almost like a raspberry type purple right there. I'm just gonna stay on the pillow and just fill these berries. We'll see that's a berry in the background and that one there too. And we'll do the same over here, fill in all these berries. They already look good, like you don't really need to do anything with it, but I always like to add um, a little bit of shine to my berry. I just find it gives it a nice little, little glow, a nice little highlight, and it comes down to that visual interest thing that we were talking about just gives a little bit of uh, detail and all like all these little details they all add up it pays to uh, take time and kind of focus on those sometimes See, and just that, just by doing that, it makes them shine. It makes them stand out just that much more. And you could even add a little bit of layer of another color, like the lighter pink that I'm doing. Just kiss it gently across the edges of the berries. Kind of a weird way to describe it, but that's pretty much what I do. Is it just a light little peck on the berry? And that's it. So those are the berries. I'm gonna think I'm gonna save the birds for last. I'm gonna go to the chimney and I'm gonna use the metallic fill for the chimney. I'm gonna have a metal chimney here. And just very 
simply I'm going to use just the color that was kind of there. I just kind of seen it and thought, yeah, that'd be a good color for chimney gray. It's like an off gray. And I'm just going to kind of add my highlights in. Remember, visual interest. Shadows create depth. Highlights create that shimmer, that layer of... Uh, I think the highlighting is my favorite to do, honestly. Because it's usually what I do last. And it adds all the shimmer and the shine to a picture. So I would say if I had to... If someone asked me what my favorite part of coloring is, it would most likely... Ooh, why am I on the dark color? I thought I was on light... It would be highlighting. I was wondering why that wasn't coming out right. It's because I was on the dark end. See, highlighting just adds a nice little shimmer shine. You could even go and do some highlights on the leaves if you wanted to. I would possibly turn down this opacity and bring up the brush size, though, to get a wider spread highlight. And I wouldn't definitely not overdo it. Mostly towards the middle here. And you could even do a little bit of a wood highlight if you want. Low opacity for stuff like this though, because if you it's you don't want it to look fake, you want it to look like a natural highlight. So always remember to play with opacities and to play with your brush size because it really does switch things up and make a difference. Okay, so that's looking all right, I think. Now all these little cookies and stuff, those are cute. Um, actually, let's color the the stock for the house here. And we can use this orange. If you deepen up an orange, it turns to a type of brown. So let's go back out and grab our wood tool again. Make sure, no, nope, I want to be on automatic. I'm going to deepen that up a bit because it's a little bit light. It's quite dark. That's okay. I kind of want it to be a little bit darker than the rest. I'm going to go and add just a little bit of A little bit of detail to it. I do want it to be mostly dark in areas though. Okay, that's about it. Don't need to do anything uh, too crazy with that for now. Since we have some browns out, let's uh, go ahead and color this branch over here. I'm going to keep it kind of dark towards the inner part and lighten it up a bit towards the end. All the links uh, for Alina's shops will be provided in this video too. She has lots of artwork. She's a very uh, well-known artist and you can buy her works on Amazon, on Etsy, if you look at the links there in the video, you can go check it out. Okay, simple, keep it like that. Now for the stockings, I'm gonna be using, I'm gonna see if I can, maybe I'll go to my colors and uh, I want maybe some blues for the stockings, some reds, greens. Using this autumn palette might be a good one because I have some lots of reds, greens, and I have the golds. That's probably what I'm going to stick with for the stockings. So go. I'm just going to go to pillow to kind of help out with the shading. I'm going to tap towards the center just to kind of 
get the shading around the edges. And then cookies, those are cookies, bulbs. Let's do the stockings first. Kind of just making them eclectic looking, no real specific anything. It doesn't have to be crazy, just fun stockings. And if you want to add a little bit of texture, you can either use a uh, pencil, glitter even, maybe put some glitter on the stockings. Glitter is quite strong, so you want to bring down your opacity because you don't want it to take over the whole color unless you do. But I like just having a kiss of it in there. I just like it to kind of show a little bit of shimmer. Gold, add a little bit of gold to this one. Maybe a little bit of light green shimmer. Then I'm gonna go to my airbrush tool and I'm going to shade a little bit under the fur or the, the fluffy part of the stocking just to give it a little bit more a little bit more depth. Could even shade a little bit in here, a little bit on the toe. Use this and get a little bit of a dark color underneath. Again, just a little bit of interest, a little bit of a little bit of intrigue. I'm not going to go overboard with the stockings. I like the way that they look. Maybe just add a little bit of a little bit of white kind of shimmer. And that's about it for the stockings. I think that's good. Now let's do these yummy yummy cookies. So we'll go to fill. I'm just gonna do a regular fill this time. For that anyway. I'm gonna go grab a little bit of a variety of browns because I don't want them all being the same brown. I kind of want some uh, variation in the color. Let's do our cookies. And then I'll grab a white and it's cool when you use white on pillow because it does add mild shading. Or you could even use the off-white if you want a little bit more dramatic. But you do get mild shading in with the pillow tool using the white. So I do often actually use, use that technique just to add some shading with my white. See, oftentimes you don't want abrasive shading. You just want a very kind of light, especially with white. And with using the pillow tool, it gives you that. And a little bit of texture to my cookies. I don't know if it's shortbread or gingerbread, but I like both. <laughs> both delicious. Just 
got to be one of my favorite things about Christmas is all the food. When you do your New Year's res resolution to lose weight <laughs> after you pigged out all Christmas. Uh, usually don't follow through with that either. So I'm just shading with uh, the pencil tool around the edges, kind of like, you know, when cookies come out, they have brown edges. So I'm just kind of doing that, giving them a little bit of, of shading. Okay. Then I'm gonna grab this cream, because I forgot to do my windows. I'm just gonna keep them white, or off white. Okay, and there's my cookies. Now let's do the balls, the decorations, the, the shiny glittery things that hang from your tree. So I'll use serape, switch, switch up the greens and stuff a little bit here. And I got gold in there too, which is nice. We're gonna use the metallic fill for this. And I'm just gonna basically make some fun decorations. Maybe do a gold one here. Maybe gold and darker red. Maybe bright red there. And I really like, I did this, for, oh, actually, you know what? I'll use Golden Midnight because it has that nice goldy yellow that I always like to use for this part. I was going to actually go to um, Summer Essence, but this gold is perfect as well. Okay, so then we're going to go to Laser. Bring your opacity up. I'm just going to add a little bit of, I did this on the gray, on the grayscale video too, because I like to add shine to the metal in the decorations. I just find it adds, you know, a little bit of extra magic to the picture. And I also like to highlight the Christmas balls, but I'll probably bring my opacity down a bit there. It's a little bit. Actually, you know what? Let's grab our glitter first. And we'll rip some glitter. And then we'll come back with the laser tool and layer it. That's the one thing nice about actually doing line art is you can use your your fills more. You can't really use your fills a lot um, when you're doing grayscale. I love grayscale. I, per, I honestly prefer it, but it's nice for a change to do line art because like I said, you get to use all those fun fills and it does cut back on your on your coloring time for sure. So if you in a rush, but you still want to do a nice piece by using your fills kind of gives you um, the opportunity to do that. When you're coloring by hand, it is time consuming. Okay, so the Christmas balls are colored. Now we can do the star that's back here. And I'll use that pretty gold again. I'll keep it on the metallic fill. And then I'll go to my glitter. Get some glitter in there. I love using the glitter tool, especially coloring Christmas stuff. I just, to me, it makes sense. Bring my opacity up a little bit here. Maybe not that much. Just add a little bit of shine to that star. 
So it's very keeping traditional colors um, in with this coloring so far. And then I might as well get this bow colored. Okay. And then I'm trying to think of what color I want the string to be. There's almost like beads and stuff going on on it. So I'm thinking maybe doing the beads, kind of continuing the gold motif there. And then maybe doing the strings, maybe just a white. A shaded white using the pillow just to keep it kind of simple and clean yeah I like that and then we go oh, almost forgot about the star up here can't forget the star up here and of course we can't forget these candies Okay, and then you can go do the little glitter trick that I did. A little bit of glitter. And then go and get your laser and then just add a little bit of a little bit of shine on the sleeping star. Go to freehand if you want to add a little shine through the the candy. It'll allow you to color rate right through the lines to give an even shine all the way through. You can add a little bit of... No, I like it the way it is. I'll just leave it. But I will grab my pencil because I just want to even out the shading here a little bit here. There we go. So now we have to color the bird seed and we got to color the birds. Now I truly enjoy coloring birds, but I have no clue what color these guys are going to be. I was thinking maybe blue. They kind of look like blue jays to me. They're probably cardinals. Hmm. Makes it tricky, tricky, tricky. Maybe we will go to Golden Midnight. And we'll use that palette. So I'll go to Pillow. Get off the metallic there for a minute. And I'm just going to fill these birds in. I'm going to do one, see how I like it. And then we will go from there. Usually after I do one, I know how I want to do the others. Right now I'm kind of hemming and hawing. So let's not rush it. Go to my pencil tool. I'm going to deepen up this blue. Make sure I'm on automatic. And then I'm going to add some shading into this bird. I do use pencil tool for animals as well. It gives texture to, um, like for, for right now, it's the feathers. It's giving texture to the feathers instead of just being flat because feathers aren't just flat colored. They definitely have texture, right? So I'm doing this one kind of different variations of blue. 
And whatever I want to smooth out from this, I'm going to use the blur tool. But I just want to get that color in there so I know what I want. And you can mix back and forth until you get what you're looking for. Because a lot of times I don't know what I want to color when I'm coloring a bird. Like I, I don't know what colors I want to use, I should say. And then once I start going, I realize, oh, okay, this looks good. Oh yeah, okay, this looks good. And it just kind of works out. That's why I only like doing one at a time then I get my ideas, I brainstorm, and then I feel better about it. Just outsourcing some different stuff. Okay, maybe put a little bit of light blue or this purpley color just up here so it's not so dark on the head. And I really love this color, I gotta say. I am a sucker for purple and blue and this is just like an amazing pewter type color and I am just in love with it. And it mixes so nicely with other colors. Really, really pretty, pretty. Okay, now I'm just going to grab the blur. Now, I don't want my brush size all the way up. And I want my opacity, like the blur amount, a bit down too. I don't want to blur the whole bird. I just want to blur actually under the eye going into the feather and maybe a bit on the head just around this area I don't want to lose the texture of the other feathers yeah I really really like that color and I really like the color of the bird I think it's a good go so I'm happy with that now to recreate this if I want to do all the birds the same color which they all are the same bird I can go to my recently used palette and uh it will bring up all the colors I just used. And it's okay if they're not exact because birds aren't exactly the same. Even though they are the, some, are the same color, they all have their own markings. And that's kind of cool to just, you know, have them the same color but have their own special, special features, special markings. Just gonna a little bit of yellow to the beak there. Maybe a little bit to the to the leg. Yeah, I'm digging the bird. I like him. Now these are my colors I'm gonna be using for the other ones. I'm just gonna highlight under his eye a bit now that I use the blur and just give a little bit of kind of a feathery look around the eye maybe not towards the back maybe just the front yeah just like that is good okay so let's do the same thing with these guys so I'm gonna fill him with pillow no he wasn't that dark this is the color or close enough anyway and I'll do this one the same. Now that I'm happy with my creation. And then I'll go to my pencil tool. I'm gonna, this is probably the blue that I used for shading these areas, which I'm gonna do the same thing. 
Let's add some shading. I might blur that line out around that bird's eye. I think I like it just plain without any added stuff around the eye. Actually, I'm going to try that right now. Yeah, it looks better blurred. Okay, back to pencil. So I'm going to do the same thing. Oh, and look at, I'm noticing that I missed wood. So I'll just color that in with the darker end of this orange here. And none will be the wiser. Sometimes I miss things, small little pieces, and I don't notice it till I go to color a different area. It's all good. And then I'm just going to rub some different colors through the feathers with the pencil tool to get that grainy look. I will blur some of it out. The blur tool is amazing for so many things. Really recommend if you haven't used it to play around with it, especially if you do a lot of like freehand colorings. Really great for portraits and stuff too. I really, really, really dig the blur. Okay, now let's do this guy. Just get some shading on this chubby fella. Looks like he had lots of bird seeds. Maybe it's the mama bird and those are the baby ones or the younger ones. Or mummy, daddy, baby. So I'm just doing the same thing, using the pencil tool, mixing some colors, getting some texture. And it doesn't have to be perfect because I'm going to go in and blur it, right? So I can just kind of get those the colors I want in place. And then they'll blur nicely together. A little bit of yellow, like I had in the other one there. Don't want to overdo it, just a little bit. Maybe even a little bit of orange in these ones. A little bit there. And, hmm. Or white here and I think that's gonna be good but oh my gosh do I love this this color in the spearmint there this blue I am in love with this pewter color it's fabulous fabuloso Aw, I like it. Okay, so now let's get out the blur tool. And opacity's down, brush is down. Maybe just a little bit higher. Sometimes it can f affect surrounding um, areas. That's why I try to keep the, the brush size down. I just want it to blend with these guys here and that is all. It's almost like they have rainbow colored feathers or something. I'm going to put a little bit more orange in this bird here. The yellow. And the pewter. The blue. just creating a really nice variation actually um, maybe just a little bit more lightness here a little bit more orange and yellow shade again I'm 
okay. I'm just fixing it up because I'm liking the way the other birds kind of turned out and this one's belly is kind of pointing towards us. So I just kind of want to see more, more color on this one here. And you can play with it as long as you want. A little bit of... Okay, they're looking pretty, pretty good. I don't really need to do too much more. I just need to finish up the legs and the beaks. And of course, this part here, can't forget the inner feather part. So I use the pewter first with the pencil. And then I use that kind of aqua marine color a little bit over it. And for this one, maybe I could do a little bit of yellow in his feathers. Like I said, they don't all have to be exactly alike. A little bit of variation is quite nice. I do this one. Use this pretty turquoise, put a little bit of that. My new favorite color, this beautiful pewter. Well, so I'm calling it pewter anyway. Is it pewter? I don't know if it's pewter. It reminds me of pewter. Okay. I'm gonna put a little bit of yellow, a little bit of orange in these ones too, why not? Okay, now I'll go to fill, 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 actually, pillow, pillow, not that it does that much difference, but it does add a little bit of variation. Back to pencil, and just add a little bit of yellow the beak. So everything is colored and I love it. You could add a little bit of magic to it if you wanted to. Magic meaning a little bit of sparkle. So we can try doing that. If we don't like it we can always put it back or we could do we could do we could do a little bit of snow maybe. I'm going to go to my technical pen. And just play with the opacity. Maybe I won't do so much snow, but just a little bit. Almost like a light drizzle of snow. Just make sure you're doing precise dots so it doesn't look messy. Just light taps on the dots. If it looks a little bit funny, use the back button. I did a couple blizzardy type snow stuff. I'm not gonna do that this time. I'm going to do very basic snow.
like it just started and everything has a couple snowflakes on it but nothing's really covered with snow it's just a light snowfall and don't forget to turn up your opacity and down up and down to make different brightnesses of snow it'll look a lot more natural and it will it will look better if you do it that way and you could also leave your opacity up and do different sizes which I always do because I find it looks more natural and then bring the opacity down and do a couple lighter ones, big ones, small ones. Have fun with it. And that's it. That's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to go overboard with it. I'm not going to make it into a blizzard. I just want a light snowfall. And there's many ways that you can do snow. It doesn't always have to be a blizzard. It could just be very light snowfall happening in the background. Very simple, very sweet. And you get the overall picture when you're done. I almost forgot to color um, the bird seed in here thinking I'm looking I'm like what I feel like I'm forgetting something not that it's a big mistake because it could definitely still be white but let's kind of make it a different we'll do there that's better give it some color anyway all right guys so this is from one of the new featured artists for december or the new featured artist for december excuse me her name is alina lazareva she has tons of art um art pictures to color not just christmas but fantasy so check her out links are provided in the video this is brianne from pigment thank you everybody so much for joining me today this was a lot of fun and let's do it again uh sometime soon okay have a happy holidays everybody Bye.